In this video, I want to address a common question that's come in concerning photography as a career and where we are and what the state of photography is in the current age. And I think this is a really important discussion to have. Um, these were questions that people asked on Facebook and I did not include them in the last episode because I really want to focus in on these today. So getting into galleries and selling your work there seems to be a career path that a lot of people are very interested in. In fact, these are basically four questions that are all the same theme. How do I apply to have my fine art photography work reviewed and or shown in galleries? Any help on locating galleries or shows for photographers? What would be a great first step towards getting into a gallery? And then finally, this was very interesting. Most photographers strive to be represented in a gallery or shoot a famous ad campaign. But do you think there's an alternative career path that has potential that's not yet realized for photographers? I have, a, okay, here's what we're gonna do. Have you ever seen a Q&A where we go on a field trip before? We are going somewhere, I have something to show you. Come with me. guys to the Modern, which is the Contemporary Art Museum here in Fort Worth. Now, they have a show going on right now that I think exemplifies what it is I'm talking about to address these questions of galleries and museums and the whole fine art world. You know, this is not a photography exhibition, which I think speaks to the point that I'm trying to make that addresses some of the questions about careers, galleries, museums, fine art, that whole thing. Photography has this way of clinging to the past and wanting to do things the way they've always been done. And I think what's being asked in these questions and what the underlying tone here is, is how do you be successful in something that a lot of these older avenues have dried up in? And that's what I want to show you. This is an exhibition by a gentleman who goes by the name of Cause. Cause is the professional moniker of Brian Donnelly, who is a well-known contemporary artist and designer working out of New York. He started his career as a graffiti artist growing up in Jersey City. Eventually, he moved to New York and went to SVA and received his Bachelor of Fine Art in Illustration in 1996. After he moved to New York in the late 90s, he began superimposing his own imagery onto billboards, bus stops, and phone booth advertisements. As he became known, these ads actually became sought after. They were taken down and collected by various people. After he graduated SVA, Cause worked for Disney as a freelance animator, and he painted backgrounds for films and did projects such as 101 Dalmatians, Daria, and Doug. In the late 90s, he began to design and produce limited additional vinyl toys for a Japanese clothing brand called Bounty Hunter and had a lot of success doing this. He has collaborated on projects since for Nike, Vans, DC Shoes, and many others. Eventually, he started a collaborative of his own called Original Fake, which carried over until 2013. In 2013, MTV hired him for the MTV Music Video Awards, and he redesigned the iconic Moon Man that went on the awards, as well as a very elaborate interior design type of thing for the event. He went on after this to do cover artwork for musicians such as Toa Te and Kanye West. The show here at The Modern features a wide range of his more fine art work, including some of the early street art that was done for bus stops and phone booth advertisements, as well as some of his acrylic paintings and then oversized sculptures. This is where it gets interesting because Cause's aesthetic is drawn largely upon influences from his childhood icons, such as Mickey Mouse, The Michelin Man, Garfield, SpongeBob SquarePants, and even Peanuts. And what was very impressive to me are the experiments that he does with form. There's these large abstract paintings where you're left to kind of decipher what it is that you're recognizing and sometimes you see these and you realize you've seen it somewhere but what is it and then even superimposing these forms on top of one another it's really pretty interesting I think my favorite pieces in here though were a series of what he called package paintings and they're from around 2000 this was a series he did it was a play on the Simpsons that was called the Kimpsons and essentially what they feature are is a painting that comes in a blister wrap, so it's redefining what the painting is. It's painting as action figure. Cause's most iconic character is a Mickey Mouse inspired design that he calls Companion, which has been featured pretty much everywhere. In fact, even in 2012, Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade featured a gigantic Companion balloon that was 
brought through the parade. The companion character in this particular show can be seen in a series of oversized wooden sculptures, which are absolutely amazing. He's done these large-scale works for exhibitions before in places like Switzerland, Hong Kong, or even London, and these were really the highlight of the exhibition to see these and even rendered in wood. Cause is a non-traditional museum exhibition, to say the least, and I've talked to some friends of mine that have been to see this, and it's interesting the mixed reactions that people have. Because it's non-traditional, some people love it and they can't get enough of it, and others think, oh, well, this is more graphic design, or this is more cartoonish in nature, and it really doesn't have a place in an art museum. But the reason I wanted to share this on the show, and my takeaway from it, um, is what I want to talk about here. Before I get into that though, I do want to give a special New Year's Eve year-end shout out to our awesome sponsor who are the awesome folks over at squarespace.com. If you need a website, an online store, or even just a one-page placeholder, head over to Squarespace and check them out and sign up for a free trial. Squarespace is an all-in-one solution for building beautiful websites. You start with a template and modify it from there and everything is completely customizable from the typography to the colors you use to the gallery layout to everything. And if you can drag and drop a folder of images onto the browser, you can build a gallery. Squarespace couldn't be easier to use and the back-end system alone takes all the pain out of building a website. Head over for a free trial and if you decide Squarespace is right for you, I can save you some money on checkout if you use offer code AOP. That will get you an additional 10% off your order. Once again, that is offer code is AOP and I want to give a special shout out to the folks at Squarespace for sponsoring another year of the art of photography. The reason that I took you guys over to see the Cause show is I think he is a very interesting example of a very non-traditional career. And I even hesitate to use the words non-traditional because it definitely is non-traditional. But when you consider, and all these questions that I got in this Q&A revolved around making it really in the art world, but I think this also applies to the commercial world, is how is that done? And we live in an age, especially me having grown up in the United States, where the arts are something that are somewhat discouraged with younger people, um, even in public schools. You know, when budgets are cut, the art classes are the first thing to go, or the music classes, which is very unfortunate because most people have this view of the arts are cool, it's fun, it's really interesting that this this kid has this talent to do something, but what are they going to do with their lives with that? You know, how is that going to be financially rewarding for them as a career? And what's interesting to me is I think the biggest problem that we have, whether this is fine art, commercial art, whatever it is that you're going to, or in our case, photography, is that we tend to, especially in photography, base success. We look for a formula. We look for something that has been done, and unfortunately, usually in decades past. So for instance, you look back to Magnum photos in the 1950s and the 1960s with Bresson and W. Gene Smith, and that's how photojournalism works. Well, that's not how photojournalism works anymore. Or we look at uh, fine art photographers and how they were able to do well. Ansel Adams, well, you do a gallery or you, and then you get into the museum world and you know curators and you just got to be doing good work and you get an end somehow. And that couldn't be further from the truth. Even if you were one of the best photographers working today, talent wise, you're still going to have a very hard time because these businesses are hard. And that's because the models that they're built on are not of our time right now. They're of earlier times. And that's not bad, but it's a bad thing, I think, to start putting weight into in terms of your own career. And that's why I wanted you to see Cause. He's not a photographer, but this is somebody who, I mean, let alone being a painter or a photographer, Cause started as a graffiti artist. I mean, you know, it's not like, well, Johnny likes to paint, but, you know, maybe he wants one day to grow up and, and do the salons and get his work in a gallery. Or I mean, this is a kid who's out tagging stuff, potentially getting into trouble more often than not. And, but goes through this career and finds a way to do it. And I, I don't know Cause, I've never spoken with him. I did hear him do a lecture, but um, I, I wouldn't pretend to assume what his plan was going into this, but just in looking at him, I think this is a person who doesn't put restrictions or boundaries on things. Anything is possible. Uh, he didn't start out with a museum exhibition. This is just the latest thing. Uh, but you know, you're looking at somebody who went from graffiti to painting to doing commercial work to doing interior design, even to having a toy line and a limited edition clothing line. It, it, he tries things. He does different things, and he tries to move out of the mold of what is possible. And here, I mean, you've all heard this, but you've heard people say it over and over again. If there were a formula for success everyone would be successful and famous because 
everyone would do it. There is no formula. You've got to find it. And I think that that's part of leading a creative life in general is that not only the work that you produce and working on your creative output in that sense, but also the kinds of business things that you do and understanding how to be creative as a whole. And I think that's the most important thing. I really like this show, obviously, and I wanted to share that with you guys because to me, he represents somebody who's extremely successful with no standard formula, who is very much of his time. So anyway, wanted to get away from photography a little bit today to make that point. I think that was the perfect way to do it. You guys, this is the last show of 2016. Today is New Year's Eve. Tomorrow is 2017. And I've already done my rewind video and I've talked ad nauseum about how amazing this year I think has been and how much you guys mean to me. I love you guys and I want to thank you all once again and I wish everybody the ultimate success next year in whatever it is that you are going into and whatever plans you have for yourself and we've done a lot of goal planning episodes and that kind of thing. I'm totally excited about next year or tomorrow as the case is and I can't wait to get there. So anyway, you get, if you guys enjoyed this video, please remember to like it, share it and as always subscribe to The Art of Photography so you'll always be up to date on all the latest and greatest stuff we do. Go watch more videos. It's New Year's Eve. Make a photography night out of it. Till the next video, I'll see you guys then. Later.